Hello everyone and welcome back to The Pottery Corner, my studio down on the south coast of England near Chichester. Welcome along everybody, great to see you all again, hi. I'm Sarah Ramos and today we're going to do another glaze kiln fire opening. Um, so the kiln is cold as usual, it's actually delayed this week so very sorry um, if you were waiting for the video out last week. Um, I just didn't get to it, it's been so busy here. Um, so lots of courses going on etc but we've got a really really interesting load in this kiln. Um, I've had um, some students doing a porcelain hydrangea head making course and some of the heads are in the kiln and some of them are still waiting to go into a glaze firing so we'll have a look and see how those have come out and of course as you know I've had the very very sneakiest of sneakies so uh, Sneaky Peak Sarah, all those people in Sydney, hello hello there. So Sneaky Peak Sarah's had the sneakiest of sneakies. So um, I'll lift the kiln lid up. Um, first item out is the stand for the bird bath. So I've been doing the bird bath tutorial. There are a couple of videos on that, how to make the rhubarb leaf and then how to do the pinch pot birds. This is the base that the bird bath is going to stand on. Um, it's been made in craft crank clay, which is the more robust one that I use in the garden. Um, I've used a textured roller by Pastry Maid. Um, and then that, that glaze on there is Amico's Blue Rutile, which um, happens to be one of my favorite glazes. I know you know I've used it a lot. So that's the base. Um, the, the, the rhubarb leaf itself, is still waiting for me to do the tutorial on how I'm going to glaze it. So I will get to that over the next week or so with luck. Okay, so that's the first piece out. Next, I've got something that's got cookies stuck on the bottom. Um, this is a slab built. Let me just see if they'll come off without too much of a... No, they won't. This is a slab built pot by Kathy. Uh, this glaze is Amico's Rainforest, probably for me could have done with another coat. We had this last time with Fern's Butter Dish if you remember. Um, just a bit patchy on the glazing, um, although Cathy was doing some glazing this week in the studio so I did say to her she needs to lay the glaze on rather than emulsioning it across and trying to spread it as far as it will go. Um, so it's nice, it's got some applique acorns and acorn leaves. This was from Kathy's first course, so she actually did manage to make a slab built pot. So well done Kathy, but for me, needed a little bit more glaze. But that's a goodie. Next, okay, so we are looking at the porcelain hydrangea heads. So as I say, there is a course um, on my website if anybody's local and wanted to come and have a go um, to make these beautiful porcelain hydrangea heads. So they go onto a cane or a metal rod in the garden. I mean, you could have them indoors, obviously, um, but there, I usually make them so that they go out into the garden and they would, they would go onto a cane in a flower pot. Um, and they're really delicate, lovely, lovely, lovely. So this is the undergarments, if you like, of the make. And then they are the hydrangea head um, flowers on the top. And then it's been painted with Amico Mixing Clear. So it's a transparent glaze. And then the color is um, Bullseye Glass Frit. Um, so um, in a former life, before I became a potter, I used to do um, fused and stained glass. Um, so I have quite a lot of glass frits upstairs in different colours. Um, and when we do the hydrangea heads, I think the glass really gives it something because it kind of sits in all the little pockets of the flower head. Really, really lovely. Now this one is um, Bryony's. And Bryony is actually coming back onto another course in January, um, but beautiful. Look how beautiful and delicate that is. She'll be really chuffed with that, and so she should be. I love the way that a few tiny bits of glass frit um, that she's just sort of sprinkled on, a bit like salt and pepper, have made this lovely 
pattern just on the edge here beautiful really nice so those are gore that's gorgeous this one is jackie's so um the same course uh so this one is jackie's not so much color on there um probably could have done with a little bit more glass there's probably just not enough glass on there um but you'll see that she has dotted in the center of each flower just a tiny speck of amico pear it just brings out the flower center just a tiny bit um, but that one is quite white um, with the glass just on this very top crown section but nonetheless a beautiful head really lovely and they, they look really lifelike don't they they're beautiful um, and they look stunning in the summer sort of um, floating in the wind outside on a cane and this one is Lara's. Lara's done something slightly different. She's used the um, allium head idea. So rather than making the hydrangea head, she's gone with the allium head. So these are slightly different shaped flowers, as you can see, slightly more trumpet shaped. And she's um, done this glazing in uh, Amoco Mulberry mixed with Amoco Snow. Yeah, and she's varied it so she's kind of put a bit more mulberry on the edges and a bit more snow on the insides and then she's used some glass again on the flower centers um, which has turned slightly blue which actually really complements it so that one's really nice too so porcelain um, body I, I don't fire my porcelain to the highest of porcelain temperatures it's it still stays to my stoneware um, temperature which is 1230 degrees um, centigrade so I don't take the porcelain up too high because I don't want it to be too brittle right so that's your first shelf let's see what we've got further down um, I've got some cookies and bits and pieces on this shelf so I'm just going to take the whole shelf out and stick it onto my other kiln out of the way Right, Barbara, here are my delightful and delicious kiln props. Which I'm still being nice to. So let's get those out of the way. There's quite a few in here. Again, this kiln is slightly unusually packed. Um, only because it's got a half shelf in it. Because um, there's some big pieces in here. Ooh, she says, tempting you. Big pieces, we like big pieces. Right, let's get those out. There we go, get rid of that. Stick that down over there. Okay, so first off, um, this is a Jackie's slab built vessel. Again, it's on a cookie. Actually, that one's just come off, as you can see. I fire them on cookies only because if the glaze does move at all, it doesn't stick to the kiln shelf. So that's why I use them. So this is a slab built um, flower pot which she's embellished with some shell sprigs and the glaze is Amico Smoke on this one. Very nice. She's done a good job on that, actually. I quite like that. So that'll look nice with um, an orchid or something similar in it. You know, just a, a, a house plant pot. Rather lovely. Well done, Jackie. Uh, this one is Jane's. Now, last time on the video, um, I had a wonky pot that didn't have a name on the bottom and I thought that it was Jane's and it wasn't Jane's, it was Louise's. So after I'd watched the video back, I thought, oh crikey, once I'd put it up on YouTube, I thought, oh dear, it's Louise's wonky pot, not Jane's. But if my girls don't put their names on the bottom, I can't remember whose is whose. So this one is Jane's and the previous one was the lovely Louise's. So again, apologies, Louise. Um, so this is Jane's wonky pot. Rather lovely. She's used the fish stamp that we have upstairs, dancing round the rim of her wonky. Rather lovely. He's rather nice. Um, she's left the glaze on the bottom as Amoco Sky. Um, and we were using this textile, which is upstairs in the studio, which is Sky under Emerald Falls. And it looks lovely on this texture. And indeed... If you look at the texture, it's not a bad match. Um, quite pleased that that's come out as the, the same colour as the test tile. Sometimes, depending on how the students apply the glaze um, in the layers, 
um, we get some variations but actually that one has come out quite true rather nice so a love another lovely wonky with personality we like those don't we and um, as usual template is in the Etsy shop if you'd like to have a look so that's a lovely wonky um, talking about glaze layering and glaze mixing there is a video on the channel um, but I'm always testing glazes always and I, I woke up in the night the other night and thought I wonder what would happen if you actually mixed rainforest and snow because I like rainforest on its own and I like rainforest with snow layered over the top so two coats of rainforest and two coats of snow and I woke up and I thought I wonder what it would look like if you mix them 50 50 ha 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 look at that one mmm beautiful so that is 50% rainforest with 50% snow mixed together in a ramekin so I weigh the glaze make myself up a little ramekin um, and then I know I can reproduce it because I know how much has gone into it. it's 50 50 and that is three coats of that mix lovely now I thought it looked quite similar to Blue Lagoon but actually it's it's more turquoise than Blue Lagoon because I thought Amico had been up to their usual tricks of creating a new glaze called something else when they'd actually just mix two glazes together because they have a habit of doing that Tangelo being one of them lavender being another one um, but have a look at that video where I go into more detail about mixing and layering glazes because it's a good one to watch um, but that I think is lovely rainforest and snow 50 50 mix pretty very nice uh, right next let's get the little half shelf out get him out let's see what we've got underneath all right props let's get rid of those okay ah uh, mine first I think so I think this is probably the only piece of mine that's in this kiln that happens often around here my stuff always sits on the shelf waiting to be glaze fired right so this is a throne mug um, this is a Mako glaze a winter wood and for those of you that watch John the Potter this is a John the Potter combination so this is winter wood inside which is um, a matte glaze um, I quite like it actually I quite like it on the inside of a mug it's it's traveled quite nicely um, on the inside of this mug rather like that and then outside is again a Mako glaze Aurora Aurora green which isn't easy to say so that's just Aurora green three coats on the outside now interestingly as I was saying earlier about the cookies I place my things on cookies always ho ho just as well look at that so that Aurora green has gone off the end of the mug and I will just have to be careful how I remove how I remove the cookie um, so that I don't actually damage the mug but really rather nice quite like that I quite like the the speckles in the the Aurora green which is quite nice it's not just plain green it has the sort of I don't know whether they're dark blue or black and beige speckles so quite nice quite like that uh, spiral handle again um, have a look at the playlists there's a uh, um, an attaching handles to mugs I'll stick a link up uh, next out is <laughs> this is rather lovely and again this is um, Lara's first slab built vessel this is um, a dish for her cat she has a kitten called Tony so um, we used the um, we've got a silicon mold of bunting with letters on so she's popped his name inside here and then we have these dear little feet look at these I hope you can see them how fabulous really characterful feet on the bottom of this dish what a laugh I love it um, so the glaze inside is our friend Amico Sky and on the outside is Indigo Float which again is a very very lovely mid blue glaze and you get this sort of speckling with with Indigo Float very nice and, and lovely feet I just think that's great so little little kitten Tony he'll stop climbing the curtains and hopefully eat out of his dish so well done Lara that's a lovely piece I just love the the comedy of the feet 
this is Holly's. Um, so this is a pod, seed pod, pinch pot with a top on it. And the glaze combination on there is Amoco Deep Fire Brick with Amoco's Ice over the top. So it just gives it this sort of slightly white dusty sheen. It's quite nice. <clears throat> that side is definitely the best. There's probably a little bit more glaze on there. But it's a nice seed pod, nice texture, interesting top. So that's a, that's a nice one too. Uh, next, this is Bryony's. So Bryony came um, for her first hand building course. Absolutely got the bug. Now, doesn't that happen a lot with clay? Those of you who are um, potters and have been potting for a long time. I mean, you know, talk about clay therapy. It really is clay therapy, isn't it? Um, so she completely caught the bug. Went out to my clay supplier, bought herself a bag of clay, um, and then when she was playing um, with it, having made some pinch pot seed pods, um, she's made this little pinch pot pot with some flowers on the top. Isn't that lovely? Really sweet. And that is Amico's Fog with Amico's Chun Plum on the flowers. Very nice. Well done, Bryony. For your first make at home, how lovely is that? Lovely little thing. Really, really nice. Well done. Uh, next, Carolyn's. So you'll have seen one of these um, before. So this is the second of Carolyn's vases, tall vases, um, with the Dalek um, pods on. So this, again, is on a cookie. Oh, that's come off as well. Good. Um, so on the back, she has uh, stippled some slip um, before it was glazed to give her this texture on the back. I hope you can see it's slightly roughened. I like that. Um, that has got um, sapphire float, so Amico sapphire float over the top. And then she's used the same combination of glazes that she used on the previous piece. So this is Amico's Textured Turquoise, which is the green, which is lovely. And then um, Carolyn's favourite glaze is Amico's Palladium. And she uses it a lot to great effect. Look at that. Um, she wanted the drips to be slightly more random than they were on her last piece. Um, but look at the almost like a mirror finish. I hope that the camera is picking up that mirror finish on the Palladium really beautiful i mean what a stunning sort of modern piece so she now has a pair that look very similar they don't look exactly the same um but nonetheless a pair that look very similar so well done carolyn that's that's a really lovely piece and i do love these dalek bobbles i think they they definitely bring something to the party so well done that one's really great okay and two more things the first of which is Oh, this is another one of Sarah's um, prayer wheels. If you've been watching my videos recently, you'll have seen several of these coming out of the kiln. Um, one of them is waiting for a luster firing. Um, we've put some uh, mother of pearl luster onto the shells, so that one will be going through a luster firing. So this one is Magnus's. Um, so she took the prayer wheels home for each of her children to decorate. And I have to say, they've done a fantastic job of, of coming up with their ideas um, and then decorating by adding clay onto the wheels and scoring and what have you. And then Sarah has used um, underglazed colours to um, colour them. So this one has um, a, a storm, a rain cloud and thunder and lightning. And then we go round to a tree with a giraffe, which I just think... Look at this giraffe, isn't he gorgeous? Um, and a little bit of sort of flower border with a stylized tree, which again is lovely. Um, and then we move round to the moon and the stars. And again, I think we might get some luster um, onto the stars to make them stand out a little bit more. And then we have the sun and a rainbow because, of course, it's raining. So we have a rainbow because it's sunny here. So, I mean, isn't that fantastic? Well done, Magnus. I just think it's just terrific that that she took them home and each of her children 
you'll have heard me say, when they go onto the totem, she's making a totem with these prayer wheels. Um, how lovely to have that that your child has made and you'll be able to keep it for forever and ever in your garden. So well done, well done Magnus. And uh, well done to Ivo and to Sorrel as well, whose pieces have already come out. So those are a lovely, a lovely thing. Now, the last thing in this kiln, I'm probably going to get slightly emotional, so I shall try not to get terribly emotional. Um, but um, again, those of you who have followed me for a long time will know that um, we lost one of our much loved students um, very suddenly. She had a pulmonary, pulmonary embolism, a PE, um, and died very, very suddenly and very, very sadly. And actually today, <laughs> happens to be the anniversary so how funny that I'm actually unloading one of her pieces so her husband Jerry um, brought some of her pieces that um, she had made at home and asked me to um, bisque fire them and then glaze them for him so this is one of Joe's coral creations which she made and I have um, glazed in her favourite glaze combination and the glaze combination on here is um, Amico's Smoky Merlot with Amico's Oatmeal over the top. And then I've put some glass on, again using the Bullseye Frit, um, because when she made her other ones of these, which are on previous kiln openings, um, that was the way that she did it. So um, he also, Jerry also bought me um, some of Joe's tools. So I now have Joe's tools in the studio, which is lovely um, because it just means that a part of her is still with us. So I did did say to Jerry, I'm sorry it's taken me a long time to get round to it, but actually I didn't really want to, to, to do them, to glaze them and to finish them because then it would be done. But now that he's brought me the tools um, that will be in the studio forever. Actually, now I can let these pieces go. So this is the first of them. Um, and this was, as I say, part of her set called Coral Creations. So um, I shall let Jerry have those. So she's still much in our thoughts and much missed. So that's um, that's the lovely Joe. Right, okay. Now I have a couple of shout outs today. I'll put my glasses on, you know me, blind as a bat. Right, so this one is from Janet Brooks who is in St. Petersburg, Florida, in America. Uh, and she said she's just returned to working with clay after many years, um, found the channel over the weekend and is loving it. So she says she's going to make a poppy head and she's going to send me a photo. So Janet, do so, please. You use the tutorial, the sculptural poppy head tutorial and um, send me a picture. I'm always, always pleased to see. So that's really nice. Thank you for taking the time to send me an email. This one is from Natalie Walker, who is in Forest Hill in Maryland. And um, actually, excuse the print color on this, on this, but my printer was running out of color. This is Natalie Walker with her wonky pot um, uh, parcel because she's ordered the wonky pot template. So Natalie, thank you for sending me that. I just thought that was great that she'd actually um, sent me a picture of her receiving the wonky pot template um, and that she's really excited to have a go at making her own. So thank you for that. And I hope that that's going well. It was a, a week or so ago that she sent me that through. Um, and this is from Christy, I'm gonna say it wrong. Um, it's either Brassington or Brassington excuse me if I'm saying that wrong, I'm not entirely sure where you are Christy, um, but she said she's enjoyed watching the videos and she always picks up some new tips and tricks and she recently watched the um, poppy head um, tutorials and she thought she'd give it a go, so I've actually taken a picture, that's her poppy head, oops sorry, there we are, so that's the poppy head there and then she sent me another message a week or so later to say that she tried the mono printing project so again have a look at the tutorials on the channel um, this is fantastic I just love this actually I'll read off of that one and let's show you this one so she said she tried the mono printing project and was quite happy with the results she learned a few lessons along the way and hopes for better results next time I think that's very true isn't it as potters we do things as sort of prototypes the first time we do them. But a lovely selection of, of textures and um, 
She's obviously used netting and stencils as we did in the tutorial. So well done, Christy. Those are really lovely, and it would be great to see what else you um, what else you do in the future. So do keep those pictures coming. Uh, last thing to do today is my Student of the Week award. Da -da 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 -da. It's quite difficult this week, actually. Quite a difficult choice. Which one would you choose? Put it in the comments because I can only choose one person and then everybody says, oh, it should have been so-and-so. Um, but for me, hmm, I'm going to go with, this is very difficult actually, but I think because last time Carolyn didn't get it because somebody else did, and this is the second of the beautiful vases that Carolyn has made. So I think this week, Carolyn, student of the week, well done you. And these vases are beautiful. And I just think that your, your thinking outside of the box just makes things much more interesting. So well done you, that student of the week to Carolyn this week. Okay, well, that's your lot. Kiln's empty, I'm afraid, no more. Um, do keep your messages coming. I always love to hear from you. Drop me a comment if there's anything you want me to answer in the way of a tip or a trick um, that I can help you with. Um, and I shall see you all on the next one. Bye for now.